Can you tell I'm ready for fall? Hi, I'm Kim the Paper Traveler, and I have some fall book recommendations for you. And since it's still pretty outside, I'm recording outside with my decorations. My husband made those a few years ago for me and out of a woodcraft pattern, and I put them up every year. Today's book recommendations, I have something a little creepy, some kind of cozy, and we may get a little graphic bookish graphic that is. So let's start it out here. I'm going to start out with a children's book, but I love it. I love the movie. I love the book. It's just one of those dark, creepy things. I think it's good for kids and adults. And that's Coraline by Neil Gaiman. And another one of his books I'm going to recommend that I don't own and I need to correct that, <laughs> I need to find that book, is The Graveyard Book. That book is very good too and they're both among my favorites and it's good for a lot of age ranges, you know, children and adults alike. This one is about a girl that discovers another side of her house. Like I said, I love the the movie and the book so definitely check out the movie too and being a short book it's just one of those quick reads too that you can add to your tbr if you haven't checked this out before definitely give it a try the next one i'm going to recommend is another short book but it definitely has those creepy vibes and that's Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. Shauna McGuire writes this book series and oh I forgot what book number it's up to now. I've read them all. It's uh, the Wayward Children series. This is book two but you do not need to read book one to read this one. This is following two characters. They're twins. They're called Jock and Jill. What the Wayward Children series is basically these children find a special door and they enter it and they go into a world of their own. It's more suited to them. And this one is dark and creepy and demented. And I think it's perfect for spooky season. So this one's not very long either, but I highly recommend it. The next book I'm going to recommend is also a movie. And I actually saw the movie before I read the book. I just read this book this past year, uh, last year, for Spooky Season, it's Rosemary's Baby by Ira Lavin. This was written in 1967. This one has, okay, first this place that they move into, this is following Rosemary and her husband Guy. She's wanting to live in a special place and they, the apartment became available in this place. This definitely has the gothic vibes to it. The neighbors, the place but it's ideal for her she wants to start a family and it's going to be a little bit different family than she was expecting this is one of those books i don't want to tell you too much going into it but i do highly recommend the book and the movie and rosemary realizes something going on but she's helpless to avoid the consequences but very very good classic book now let's go over to the cozy side for a moment and I will mention Garden Spells. This is a book that can be read any time of year basically and this is by Sarah Addison Allen. Her books are what I describe as sort of a magical realism type of books. It's set in the real world with a touch of magical element of witchy type of themes. This is following the Waverly family. I think this is a perfect cozy fall read especially if you are a person that loves gardens and plants and just family relationships i highly recommend this one and the next book i'm going to recommend is also a movie and it's one i'm currently rereading and that's practical magic by alice hoffman now i'm going to do a confession here i saw the movie first years ago and I loved it. Practical Magic is one of those movies I watch oh, maybe twice a year, but at least every spooky season. Definitely recommend it. I love that movie. I love Nicole Kidman and Sandra Bullock. I just love their characters in the movie. So when I read this book after seeing the movie, I 
liked it, but I was a little let down by it, but I still enjoyed it. I'm currently doing a reread of this book and I'm enjoying it even more because I know going in, it's not going to have the, the movie is more of a whimsy and action. And this is more of a subtle tone. This is about the family dynamics. You saw uh, Jillian, she is a train wreck and she's trying to put herself together. You see that a little bit in the movie too. And following Sally's daughters, they have more of a storyline in this where in the movie, they're just little girls being cute. They have their own thing as they're growing up. They're against each other and trying to find their way, the coming of age type of thing in the story. And the ants aren't as responsible in this book as they are in the movie. You see in the movie, they have chocolate cake for breakfast, but the, they pretty much let the girls raise themselves, it sounds like, in the book. But I am enjoying this upon a reread even more. And now it's time to get a little creepy and show you one of my favorite Stephen King books. And that's Dr. Sleep by Stephen King, another book that was made into a movie, which is not surprising because Stephen King has numerous books that were made into a movie. This is technically a sequel to The Shining, but you do not need to read The Shining first. In The Shining, Daniel Torrance was a little boy and he has the gift of The Shining. So that comes into play in here, but basically at the beginning of this book, he is grown up, he's been traumatized by things in his past, and he's an alcoholic and is trying to recover from that. And that shows his process he's going through to try to recover from that. Meanwhile, something evil is lurking around. Now, I will give you warnings. This is uh, a lot of cruelty to children in this book. And it's, it's, that's hard to digest, believe me. But I don't know, something about this book just fascinated me and I really enjoyed it. And I did enjoy the movie too, I actually did. But this book was better than the movie. I highly recommend this. I just love that creepy cover. The next book I'm gonna show you was made into a TV series. <laughs> it's The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I read this years ago when it first came out and I, fell in love with this book. I was wanting everybody to read it. This was before the times of BookTube and I absolutely loved it so much. In this one, you have a person that is a witch, but their powers have been locked and they don't even know it and it's following Diana Bishop. What I love about this story is her trying to find her powers and the special manuscript, it's something mystical that all of the races are trying to get and she accidentally calls it up at the library one day. Ashmole is the name of the, the book. All the species are divided now. The werewolves and vampires and witches, they are not to intermingle with each other. It's against the rules. So this is also about the forbidden love between a witch and a vampire. And this is part of a trilogy. I enjoyed the first book the most out of all of them. She does have another book uh, based in this world. And I saw on Instagram that she finished a manuscript for another book set in this world. So I'm excited to see what that's going to be about. The next book I'm going to recommend has also been made into a B-movie, and I did enjoy that too. Definitely enjoyed the book better. And this is actually a non-fiction book. This is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Merritt. Now, it's been years ago since I've read this, and I actually want to try to read this again this fall. I have read it when it first came out. Yes, I was attracted to that cover, but the story is very good. If you're a person that loves... Uh, like Savannah has that creepy vibe to it, I think, in general anyway. And that's where this author went to. I can't remember if he was doing a book or a magazine article uh, around Savannah area. But while he was there, a murder happened. And so the focus became that around this 
one character in particular. If you've watched the movie with Kevin Spacey, you may kind of know what's going on here. But this book definitely had those like voodoo vibes to it too. He kind of uh, introduces some of that. And I think it's a perfect read for fall. And I definitely want to try to reread this this year. Now we're going to get graphic. This is such a cozy, wonderful graphic novel. And I'm not a fan of graphic novels in general. I, I don't. I rarely read them. Occasionally, I love this. I actually found this through a book haul that Gross from GKBC did, and I thought, oh, that would be great. I love including books for fall. That's my favorite season into my TBRs. So, this is Mouse Guard, Fall 1152. This is, reminds me sort of a uh, Watership Down, um, Stuart Little, and they get made those references in here too. But they have their story all their own. Any like mice that have their own little villages or missions or like any kind of animals that, that do that. I, I love those type of things. And I think this is one of those books, uh, graphic novels that's perfect for kids or adults. And I really enjoyed reading this. I'm so glad that he had this on his channel. I think they have two more and kind of a seasonal type of books in this. I definitely want to pick it up with the other two. Let me show you a little bit about this book. And if you like the little towns, oh, there's a map at the back of the book. I'll mark the page here. Okay, here's the overall view of the map. And here is the town, Barkstone. And here is where the mouse guard who protects Stone Lip and Lock Haven. But all throughout the book, it has that the colorations of fall in there. And even the back cover, you can see the leaves there. The few love just like beautiful books in general. This would be a great one to try to read for the fall months, too. I don't care much for this picture. <laughs> But this is a natural enemy of a mouse. Think about it. Yeah. And the last book is a graphic novel, but I love it. I want this author to come out with more things, but I know it probably takes an extremely long amount of time to compose everything. Between the story, the illustrations, there's just such attention to detail put into this book. My favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. I don't know if you can see the attention to detail that's put into this book. Now, this is not a scary book. I thought it was going to be a scary book when I first read it. It's not a scary book. It is trying to solve a murder mystery, but this book is set in the 1960s Chicago following a little monster looking creature <laughs> named Karen and her family dynamics. And you see the troubles that people have and it's just showing one thing about people from all walks of life and some of the mistreatment. You don't realize what's going on and some signs you see, but it also teaches you some things. Uh, it shows certain pieces of art and it'll have a little thing about that artwork. And I love that this book looks like it's a big notebook. And when you flip throughout the book, now this is an adult graphic novel. And I have to be careful what pages I flip it to because it has a few <laughs> pictures in there. I wouldn't want to show uh, on screen here. So that you can see the subtle differences in here. If you are a big graphic novel type of fan highly recommend this and if you're not I still highly recommend this is such a beautiful book to look through just for the illustrations itself highly recommend this one if you haven't read it before well thank you for watching today's video let me know below what are some of your favorite fall reads and I hope you have a wonderful creepy fall goodbye